check out the sequence gear on this thing. So here's down. And watch the backs. Landing lights, come on. Gear comes down, back in. Sweet. Alright everybody, welcome back to Just Plain Crazy. I am Brennan and right now we are going to throw together and build, some people got upset over the word build, let's assemble this Hobby King 1600 or 63 millimeter version 2 C130. Now, this is available in two different schemes. There is the Coast Guard scheme and the civilian transport scheme. Check this thing out. This looks fairly simple to build and we are going to find out right here. So why do we need a builder and assembly video if something's only going to take 15 or 20 minutes? One, because we get to check out the quality of the pieces and how well things fit and go together. Together. Two, this may be one of your first planes and you're a complete novice. So this video has a ton of advantages to somebody in helping them decide if this model's for them. Link down in the description below if you're interested. Go on over to www.hobbyking.com and check them out. But otherwise, I want to get to flying. Let's get the building assembling. All right, guys, your plane's going to come with a quick setup guide. Scan the QR code, follow the video, and just use this with CG and throws. Or you can actually go to hobbyking.com and look under the files tab under this product when you go and click on it. Either way, you're going to get to some pretty cool directions, but otherwise, the bulk of what you need is here and in this video. All right, guys, so you're going to go ahead and slide in these steel spars. These go in the back. Again, um, they just kind of push in against some foam and bottom out. You don't want to shove them in there too hard. If you feel leery about it and you want to uh, epoxy those in, that's fine. It has this quick slide-in connector. So the whole horizontal stab is going to just slide right in as we look up the business end of the C-130 right here. And this would be one of those things. Do you ever want to take your model apart or not? So I guess if you wanted to, you can go ahead and apply, rough this stuff up, apply some foam tack and stick it in there. But I want to show you how this rudder assembly goes in. And I don't think you're going to have to here. Um, so we just align that connector. And then we're going to slide this whole assembly together. Just make sure your connector lines up, push it in and make sure that whole tail is seated. And I'll pick you up here so you could see a higher view also. But that thing will just slide out, slide it in to engage the tail all the way. Check your connectors. Now's a good time to make sure that um, your elevators and these LED lights and stuff, that all those connectors are good and plugged in. The only one left then that sticks out here is your rudder. So you're gonna go ahead and take your rudder and we're gonna make sure we match the colors up and we're gonna plug that in and slide that into those two open sockets. So match up our signals. And I'm one of those advocates that I don't trust what I can't see. So with that being said, um, we're gonna take a minute here and we're not going to do it on camera because you guys probably seen it in a million of my videos. Make sure this connector gets plugged in right. Okay. Um, but I'm going to just take a minute and put some tape on those. All right. So we have the tape installed on all of our connections. Just going to push those down into there. And now we're going to make sure we don't pinch our rudder wire. And that just drops in those two big lugs right there. So now let's throw this thing on a stand and install the screws from underneath. Now all we're going to do is go ahead and install these three millimeter rudder screws. And there's a lot of models I really struggle, guys. I'm not even going to lie getting these things in. And lining up going into the rudder and you're watching the first go here so all of this once it's all screwed together with these plastic tidbits that elevator shouldn't be able to come out that horizontal shouldn't be able to come out of this plane at all 
Um, but yeah, so I usually struggle getting everything here in and get it to line up. Maybe because I can't see. Let me move you over here. I need to be on the other side. I dropped it. It went down in the hole. So if you drop that down in there and it's not lined up, um, it went into Never Never Land. So that's just one thing to be aware of. It's not a problem, but I got to get it back. Hold on. All right, so here you go. Build tip for you. This hole for that goes through the whole body of the plane and goes into the inside. This will be a lot easier for you to get this one in if you open up that cargo door and slide this in through the back and then access through there. So let's do that. And this is threading into a nice um, piece of plastic. So that's solid. And you'll feel when it gets tight right there. And let's check this one. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and put in our uh, elevator linkage. And on my model, I'm going to use the, let's use the furthest one out for the most amount of throw. And here I'm gonna use the furthest one out. Slide through our bolts. So our servo right there is pretty centered. And it looks like we're gonna have to crank these in a little bit. And after we get the radio gear hooked up, I'm not gonna make these completely tight right now. After we get the radio gear hooked up, then I'll come back to all of these. But whatever you do, if you're gonna do that, don't forget. Don't smash a model because you forgot to do that. Let's go ahead and install our rudder linkage the same way. We're going in the furthest hole out. And for me, I got to thread this bad boy in a good bit. All right. And uh, that's pretty quick and easy, guys, for the tail. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get over here to the wings and check these things out. So we're just going to take our... We're going to take our wing spar... We're going to slide that in. I love the flaps on this. Oh my God, are those cool. So we're just tweaking to make sure that we can get the wings and the sockets right. We're going to flip this thing over. Now we're just going to install our four short three millimeters into the bottom of the wing. All right, guys, now let's go ahead and we're gonna put in our pylons. So we're, what we're going to do now is we are gonna cut those out. So maybe it's just best on these, just use your fingernail. Fairly easy. Because you can feel where that crease is. Cool, let's do the other side. So check out this cavernous opening of this fuselage. This thing is awesome. You got plenty of room up in here, but what I wanna to stress to you is two things. Number one, look at how cool this door is for this opening. Number two, this thing is almost completely hidden. You cannot tell that that is the access door of this plane. 
you actually need to look around this thing and go, oh, where do you get into this thing at? And then you will see this little lever right here. And when you pull this, but th that foam is so clean in there. And I am not even kidding. This looks fantastic. Again, pull it open. Take a look inside. That's where we're going to mount the receiver and our 4S battery. How cool. All right, next up we have a radio on. We're gonna go ahead and install the last of our control rods and uh, power the plane up here and make sure that we have everything set to a neutral. So again, a 4S 2200 size pack in here. All right, so we're plugged in, we're armed. Let's go ahead and shut our cargo door. There we go. All right. So we have everything there powered up. Let's go ahead and install those and adjust them. All right, with the flap set up, you have your sliders and then you have your actual flap surfaces. It's going to be necessary for you to go ahead and make some slight adjustments here and you wanna make sure that nothing is binding as it'll cause the servos to burn out. So I had to make a small adjustment on both sides here and there using the Allen wrench. And uh, as you can hear, everything's powered up and we are good to make sure our throws are right. Now, because the spacing is tight between the fuselage and this uh, flap adjustment they've included this allen wrench so you can actually get in there if you don't already have uh, one of those tools so um, what i thought initially was ah, maybe they just left these loose again make sure you check all your connections obviously on every plane before you fly it but um, my anticipation is they left them loose because they already know that we're going to have to take them apart to make our fine adjustments once we power it up and we will make sure we do that all right guys now we're going to go ahead and sync up our escs so all the props are off you're going to go ahead and turn your radio on. Now, some guys will dispute, you know, you got to have the trim all the way down. It doesn't matter as long as you don't play with it. So the purpose of having it all the way down is just simply, you know, where it always is. On an electric model, I leave it there um, and don't ever mess with it. So now we're going to go ahead and power that all the way on full power. And from there, we're going to go ahead and plug in our battery. You hear the double. Go down with your throttle. And now when we come up to our propellers or our motors, everything powers on at the same time. So perfect, love it. Now here's something worth noting guys, this LED up top, notice throttle is down right now. I'm gonna turn the throttle on, that starts blinking. So don't think it don't work for whatever reason it's set up to work by throttle, but still cool. Now one of the things I opted to do on my model, you have to put the gear, the gear out or open. Um, most of the wiring in here is all held in with a big piece of reinforced tape. I chose to go in and just apply some zip ties to kind of clean things up, hold it away from the gear, as well as uh, a little bit of hot glue on all the tabs and the circuit board just to make things a little bit more firm in there and really not add any weight to it because they were very focused on the weight. That's one of the things I want to be conscientious of. I don't want to do a bunch of modifications that are going to add that weight right back in. So a couple zip ties, a couple drops of hot glue, and everything is secured, cleaned up, and out of the way. Now we're going to put in the scale tidbits. And for example, like the um, wiper blades, all these things are very small. And if you're going to do it... Um, you try and want to make them look nice and clean and our fingers can easily get in the way and then we have glue everywhere. So what I've done here, especially for these, is just put a couple drops of CA on a lid and I'll dab that in there like that. And then using a pair of tweezers, most likely I'll hold it and place them right up there. There are a couple other tidbits um, that you will glue in here in the front so we will put those tidbits in and then it looks like we have a couple that um, are going to go somewhere up top i know the gray one is easy to see right there that one will get glued in there 
but uh, let's go ahead and get our tidbits. All right, now let's talk about prop drives. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the props. Now, in order to install the props, uh, we're pretty much well done with everything else. They have these little drives on the back side. You're gonna make sure that you line these up with the appropriate props. So the left side, uh, everything spins inboard. So that means that the uh, left side is going counterclockwise and the right side of the plane is going clockwise. So you're gonna take these little hubs. They only fit on one way and you're gonna plop those right over the motors. Now you're gonna go ahead and install the props right on there. So I know a lot of people, they worry about the availability of parts and you know, I can't find things. Well, there's consumables and I look at props as a consumable. So when you buy a new aircraft and you think, oh, it's gonna be popular, um, again, just a, a small drop of blue Loctite, just a small drop, you know, and you're like, oh, this is going to be a popular plane. You guys should look to pick some of this stuff up. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I have a couple spare props on hand just because a wing, you know, a wing tri uh, drag or um, a wing over or something on, and we're just snugging those up down on the runway and you break a prop or you're putting it in the trailer. I break more stuff getting it in and out of the house than I do flying it. Believe it or not, that happens. And, um, you know, it'd be nice to have something on hand and not go, well, these specialty props, because it's not like you're going to really just go out and, and get one somewhere. And I get that. So it looks like we have just a little piece of plastic flash in the inside of this one. And again, just till it's snug. And as soon as these are on, if you're kind of new to this, make sure you set up a, a throttle lock. You don't you don't want any any accidents on the home front. You need all your fingers and toes and whatever else you're going to use. So on this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to install the hubs. Now I am going to talk to you guys also about calibration of ESCs, especially in multi-rotors. It's super important that you do this because otherwise you're gonna have one working um, or two working and maybe two not and they're gonna be delayed and the thing's gonna yawn, it's not gonna fly well and you're gonna be like, this plane's no good. And here, the whole time, it just had to do with a simple calibration process so it knows your low settings. So anyway, that's what we're gonna work on here as soon as these are done. I will take you guys through that procedure. It's very quick and simple, but um, I, I'm i loving the looks of this plane, guys. I, You know, I, I'm finicky when it comes to a lot of things, and I'm just telling you straightforward. Um, I think they've done a good job here, and I can't wait to actually fly this and see what its flight envelope is like. Is it just like my AL where it you can do other things with it, but it's just best to fly in circles, or is this going to be a, you know, kind of, showcase it a little bit and beat on it so um, i'm very inquisitive to see what we got but that's how you install your props um, again everything's turning inboard so keep that in mind let's just go ahead and glue on our nose cone it looks like it really only fits on one way um, i do not want to tape this thing into position if you do want to tape it into position i would coat all this with baby powder first before you try and stick tape but um I use foam tack or beacon craft glue. It's the same stuff. You can buy it from Hobby Lobby for half the price of foam tack, and it's the same manufacturer. Now, if you wanted to, you can set this on the ground, and that's what I'm going to opt to do, I think, just to keep some pressure. We're going to set it down on the nose on uh, a cushion pad, and we'll wait for that to dry. We will be back Back in a few gents. Now let's go ahead and use our throw meter and set to throw. Again, you can use the quick startup guide for this. 
check out the Avios C-130 version 2 Coast Guard scheme. Woo -woo. Man, this thing's a beaut. All right, guys, we are made and ready. There you have it. That is the uh, Hobby King Avio C-130 version 2 U.S. Coast Guard scheme. So do me a favor, check out the link in the description below or head on over to www.hobbyking.com to check out this plane or others. If you might like the civilian version instead to transport, that stuff is down in the description as well. So... Uh, with that being said, it is Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You're Just Playing Crazy for hanging out and watching. As always, smash the thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. If you're going to hit that bad boy, do it twice for me. Like, share, subscribe, all the cool shameless plug stuff. Head on over to the official Facebook and Instagram at Just Playing Crazy pages. Until we get this bad boy to the field to maiden it, we are out of here. So I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.